this is question one from the uh, May June administration of uh, ACE Physics Syllabus Code 9702, question paper 11. And it reads three wires each exert a horizontal force on a vertical pole as shown, which vector diagram shows the resultant force R acting on the pole. So here you got to be able to sort of translate these vectors in space, put them head to tail, and it kind of doesn't matter what order we add them in, the result is still going to be the same. If you inspect choice A and you see like this, this vector is pointing up and this vector is pointing down and say, well, that's not right. So we eliminate A as an obviously incorrect choice. Everything about B looks good. It goes to the right, like this vector does. And then we put head to tail with that one, a down vector, like we translated this one in space over here and drew it down. And then the last one would be putting this one head to tail with that. So it'd go up like that. And sure enough, they've connected the dots there. So B has to be correct. It, it matches everything. Well, what's incorrect about C? This thing pointed to the left when this is clearly to the right. What's incorrect about D? This thing pointing up when this is clearly down. So it's easy once you understand the idea to just eliminate the obviously incorrect choices and, and D is the only one that makes sense there. So the correct answer to this, gotta be B, gotta be B. All right, we're just gonna keep on working through this paper here. We're gonna look at a base unit type calculation. It says, which pair of quantities do not have the same SI base unit? Well, electromotive force and electric potential difference, we haven't really covered uh, during the first semester. That's uh, an idea that obviously belongs to electricity, but I'll tell you that both of these things are voltage. They're voltage, and so they're measured in volts and therefore the same unit. We could break volts down to the base units. We'll save that for next semester. Right now, it's just important to know, okay, those, those are both voltage. Pressure and stress, we've just covered this. In fact, your assignment uh, for the matter and material slides was due on Friday, I think, but you know, if you want to turn it in today, uh, I can update your, your journal grade for that. Pressure and stress, indeed, same thing, right? Force per area, so they're measured in the same units, newtons per square meter, pascals. Um, and then we could break that down to the base units and realize that they're the same, right? So as soon as we kind of show like, oh, they're the same derived unit, they're going to have the same base units, you know, we, we realize that that's not the correct answer because they do have the same SI base unit. Spring constant and moment of force is the correct answer. They do not have the same SI base units. Again, as soon as you can sort of show different units. Um, now, sometimes units can look different, like meters per second squared are the same thing as a Newton per kilogram. You may recall these are two different ways of sort of measuring G. They don't look the same right now, but if you broke, you know, sort of Newtons down into the base units, you'd realize, oh yeah, kilograms cancels and, and they are the same. But here we can kind of show like a spring constant is Newtons of force per meter of extension. And the moment of force, remember, is how many Newtons of force are acting a, a certain distance away from a pivot. So we can compare these two and realize like there's no way we could make these equal. A Newton per meter is never going to be a Newton meter. Okay, and so this is the correct answer. They do not have the same base units. Torque and work, remember like Torque of a couple is the same thing. It's like Newtons of force acting a distance away from a pivot. Work, remember, is force times displacement. So you can kind of match that up and realize when you multiply force and displacement, you get the same units as you do for torque. A note that I want to sort of emphasize here is that you never, like while we can say a Newton meter is equal to a joule of energy or a joule of work, we would never talk about joules of torque, okay? Even though they are the same base units and they're both you know, measured in Newton meters, we leave it as a Newton meter for torque. And for, for work, we can say, well, a Newton meter is a joule. Okay, but, we, but joule is a unit of energy or work, not of torque, even though they're sort of measured in the same base units or the same derived units Newton use. Okay. But indeed, if we sort of plugged in what, what the base units are, we'd find that they are indeed the same. So that's another uh, good question in terms of reviewing base units, key foundational idea here in physics. Question three, seems like a good example question to do because it's about young modulus. We just got done covering matter and materials chapter. And so take a moment to read through that question, YouTube. 
if you can identify the relevant equation, do you know what the Young modulus is? Do you know an equation for that? If you don't, review your notes. You want to have that in your notes. Okay. If you do have the Young modulus and it's asking you for the best estimate of the value of the Young modulus, I would start with that. I would begin with the equation for Young modulus. And so there's different ways to think about Young modulus. The Young modulus E is the stress over the strain. Remember that the stress is the force per area and the strain is the extension over the original length. To turn this into a single fraction, we sometimes just consider Young modulus as the product force times original length divided by the area, the cross-sectional area on the extension of the denominator. So this is a good way to sort of memorize Young modulus too. This is a lift, which is an elevator, is supported by two steel cables, each of length 10 meters, and that's labeled here, and a diameter of 0.5 centimeters, okay? The cables extend, telling us this information, by one millimeter when a man of mass 80 kilograms steps into, steps into the lift. What is the best estimate of the value of the Young modulus of the steel? So we should, since we're solving for Young modulus E, we should be able to pick out sort of what's the force, what's the length, what's the area, what's the extension, and this is tricky because there's lots of intermediate calculations along the way. Just like we looked at an example problem where there was like four steel cylinders supporting a 10 kilonewton load, we had to divide that 10 kilonewtons amongst the four supporting rods. Here, we have to realize that each cable is really only supporting half the man. All right, a man divided against himself can still stand in the elevator as long as it's just theoretical. We're not really gonna split the man in two. We're just gonna sort of theoretically split him in two and, and say, well, 40 kilograms of this man is being supported by this steel cable and the other 40 over here. So when we calculate the force, what's the force of this man? His weight, right, equal to mg, but I'm only gonna consider sort of half, half the man. All right, because again, I, I just have sort of one steel cable. I'm just going to consider one of these things. And so rather than substituting an 80 kilograms for mass, I'm just going to take care of that right off the bat so I don't sort of, you know, make the mistake. If you look at your answer choice and you're like, oh, this number is half of this number. This number is half of this number. There's a mistake there that students are going to make where they're not going to account for the fact that both steel cables are sharing in, in sort of the burden of supporting the weight of that mass. So I bet you that this answer and this answer are wrong. They're designed to capture those students that, that aren't mindful of, oh, we, we have to sort of split this weight in two, or we have to sort of share in the burden of supporting that load. So it's either going to be A or C, and they're off by like an order of 10. I, I don't know sort of which ones so we have to just do the calculation. So I'm going to substitute in not 80, but 40 kilograms here. We'll multiply it by 9.81 newtons per kilogram. This was mentioning a moment ago. That's one way to think about G, how many newtons of force acting on each kilogram of mass. Well, here we got 40 kilograms of mass. That's the total force of, everybody with a calculator knows. Three 392.4 newtons. Good, YouTube. Well done, you beat me to it. So that's gonna be the force that we're gonna plug in here. Okay. What is the original length of the steel cable? Given 10, right? 10 meters. So that's how long it is. What is the area? If the cable, we can assume circular cross section, they give us the diameter. So the area of a circle is pi r squared and r is one half the diameter. So with what we're given, if we sort of substitute in this value for D and then square it and then multiply it by pi, that's the number that we'll substitute in here for area. The cables extend by one millimeter. Okay, so, so we can kind of see where the last one is there too. All right, so let's calculate the area. Pi times one half, times the, the diameter is 0 0.5 centimeters, all right? And so this is the quantity here, the one half D, the R that we wanna square. So make sure that you sort of evaluate this first 
and then square it and then multiply by five, right? We're squaring the radius. Don't like square the diameter and then half it. So that's not what we want to do. 0.5 times 10 to the negative two in the calculator. And then we're going to divide that by two. So it's the radius. So the radius is 2.5 by 10 to the negative three. Radius squared times five. If you're trying to calculate the area of a cable, the cross sectional area of a, of a cable that has a diameter of half a centimeter, and you deduced it to be 1.96 times 10 to the negative five meters squared, well done. That's correct. And I'm just sort of pushing the buttons correctly. And then the extension is going to be one millimeter. So it's incredibly useful to just have the orders of 10 memorized for the metric prefixes so you can take care of this centi like this, 10 to the negative two. Take, take care of this milli like this, 10 to the negative three. And everything's in the good units we like. We got newtons of force. We got square meters of area. Look at all of our choices are that. The length and the extension, their units are going to cancel, right? So we just get force per area. Those units of stress are the units of Young modulus, which are the same as the units of pressure. You may recall from a question two up there that we just did about the basement. All right, so now it's just plugging everything in and taking care of, uh, you know, the scientific notation and order of operations. So in the numerator, we got 392.4 newtons times 10 meters divided by this area here, 1.96 by 10 to the negative five meters squared. So again, those are your units right there, newtons per meter squared. And then this one is, you know, this value, one by 10 to the negative three meters. So these meters cancel, newtons per meter squared are the units there. And if you type all that in your calculator correctly, you should get choice What's that, YouTube? You want to see that calculated on the screen? It'd be my pleasure. We got to find a good spot for it here. Um, there we go. We'll move that out of the way. We'll slide this one up. All right, so let's type it all in. 392.4 times 10. To avoid mistakes, this is what I like to do. Divided by open parentheses. If you're not using grouping symbols, you divide by scientific notation, your calculator is going to give you the wrong answer because it's going to divide by this first and then multiply by 10 to the negative five. You don't want it to do that. You want it to divide by that entire quantity. So open parentheses, 1.96 times 10 raised to the negative five. When I close the parentheses, I can see, yep, that's the number I want to divide by. When I hit equals, it will do the division. Now I still need to divide by this extension over here. So one more division, open parentheses, one times 10 raised to the negative three. When I close parentheses, I can see, yep, that's the number I want to divide by. And I get my final answer. Now I have to count all those decimal places. And what if I make a mistake there? So if you have a calculator with this FE key on it, it will automatically turn it into the scientific notation. So two times 10 to the 11, which is choice 